I had just graduated with an accounting degree. And I thought I had it all figured out. I got a job, which led to another job. And I thought because I was making pretty good money and I was still young, that I was set. Here's the thing. I had nothing to show for it. If you looked at my finances, you'd have no idea that I was making six figures at the time. And if you compared my net finances to my buddy, who was just waiting tables, there wasn't that much of a difference. I knew that something had to change. So I started to learn how to build actual wealth. I put together a list of 10 things that I did on my journey that helped me go from paycheck to paycheck to investing six figures every single year. Put in the comments how many of the 10 you already do. Okay, so first up is something that a lot of people will gloss over and think, hey, I've already heard about this a thousand times. I know this because I used to think the exact same way until I actually started using them the right way. And that is goals. And not just any goals, but SMART goals. SMART is just an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Clearly defining and planning for your goals is really important. I don't wanna get into goal planning and strategy in today's video because that would be an entire video in itself. But I do wanna communicate that goals will change your life if you set them, look at them every single day, and then commit to actually achieving them. Some finance goals that you might wanna try could be based around like your net worth or getting out of debt except for your mortgage or something like that. Then once you have your goals, reverse engineer how you'll actually achieve them and then track your progress. I set a goal for one of my companies to do a million dollars in revenue in a single year. And I was able to achieve it because I looked at it every single day and I understood that if I was able to accomplish it, what it could mean for my family to do the things that we wanted to do. So I wanna encourage you to just make one finance goal for the next quarter, just one, and then commit to it, write it down, and then I want you to tell somebody else about it. Which brings us to our next way to boost your financial IQ. Thomas Corley spent five years researching the daily habits of 177 self-made millionaires. And then he wrote a book about it that he named Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. And in the book, he said, from my research, I discovered that daily habits dictate how successful or unsuccessful you'll be in life. Basically, you set goals and then reverse engineer them into tasks or habits that will accomplish those goals. And then you meet regularly with somebody else that helps you stay on track. It sounds simple and maybe even a little bit weird to some, but I'm telling you this can really skyrocket your financial IQ. I have weekly accountability meetings with my team where we pick three things that we commit to doing that week that line up with our quarterly goals. And then we hold each other accountable for those things that we said we were going to do in the previous week. We did this process for an entire year. And then our year in review, I pulled out my journal and I listed out all the things that we had accomplished in that year. It seriously took me like 10 minutes to get through all the cool things that we accomplished. The look on my team's faces was priceless and I was really proud of them for all the work that we did. There are two ways to go about this, the paid route and the free route. The paid route would be something like the Better Life Tribe, which I'm a part of, and I'll put the link in the description to it. We have weekly accountability meetings with a pod of like-minded people and I really enjoy it and I've seen a lot of success from it. The free route is just go grab a buddy, meet regularly, I suggest weekly, and then make sure it's someone that will actually tell you when you're getting off track. I recommend taking your SMART goals that we talked about earlier and then setting habits or weekly tasks that will help you get there. I have an app on my phone, it's called Loop Habit Tracker, and basically I just check my tasks off as I do them on a daily basis. I'm telling you, please give this a try. Set goals, even just quarterly ones will work. Then grab a buddy that you trust who will actually tell you when you're getting off track. The results will blow your mind. And speaking of using apps, that brings us to my next piece of advice that I learned on my journey. And that is using finance apps and habit tracking apps on your phone. Apps are great because they're easily accessible since they're on your phone and you can quickly check the health of your finances or even make investments with the push of a button. I already mentioned in my previous point that I use an app on my phone to track my habits. There are tons of habit tracking apps out there. So just go pick one, put the specific habits that you wanna track in there and then just do your best that you can in sticking to them. Other apps that I like for more finance-based stuff, specifically budgeting, are You Need a Budget and Mint. You Need a Budget is great for setting a budget and then sticking to it. And honestly, I love how the app is organized. It's free for 34 days, and then they start charging like 15 bucks a month, which is a little bit pricey for me, so I don't love that part. But you can also use Mint for budgeting as well. Mint also includes like a credit score watch feature, and that's nice, but just be careful. 
because this goes with any app. Lots of apps are just basically a lead generation tool and they'll sell your inquiries to the highest bidder. So be careful of offers for credit in any application that you use. For investing, I like Robinhood and Betterment. Robinhood makes it super easy to invest regularly and you'll have access to pretty much most investments that you're ever gonna need, even crypto, if that's your cup of tea. We only take Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency because we've all decided centralized banking is rigged so we trust more in fly-by-night Ponzi schemes. Betterment is great. I love that you can import all of your asset accounts into one place and then track your net worth, which I think is super important to know. Betterment also has an automated investment feature, which is nice to have so you can just invest on a regular schedule without even thinking about it. Okay, next up is Finance Podcasts. I like to throw these on when I'm in the car or working out. I even listen to them when I'm taking my kids places. I was in the car recently with my five-year-old and he heard the podcast host say S&P 500 and he quickly said, ha ha, S&P 500. He's exactly like me. Another thing that I will say here is to try to find podcasts that line up with your beliefs about money. Remember, personal finance is personal. So with that being said, here are some financial podcasts that I recommend. Bigger Pockets has been around for a while and it's been mostly like a real estate podcast, but now they've kind of branched off into a lot of different podcasts and they've got one called Bigger Pockets Money and it's more based on personal finances. So I recommend that one, it's a great listen. Uh, the next one I recommend is called Money for the Rest of Us, which is hosted by J. David Stein. I love this podcast, it's very informative, so I recommend that one as well. The third one I'll recommend is called A Better Life with Brandon Turner. It's not necessarily a finance-based podcast, but he has a lot of really successful people on there and they do end up talking about finances and personal finance all the time. So give that one a listen. It's a great podcast. Okay, number five is mentors. Mentorship is something that deeply changed my life and it made my businesses, finances, and life in general way better. I'll tell you exactly how I found my mentor and how I convinced him to be my mentor. When you're looking for a mentor, you'll want to find someone that is either one or maybe two steps ahead of you. Think about it. If you walked into high school algebra and you didn't know how to add or subtract yet, it would be pretty hard to understand because you didn't have those necessary building blocks yet. The same thing applies to learning from a mentor. Also, it's gonna be pretty tough for you to get access to a mentor that is super far ahead of you anyways. The other thing that you'll wanna look for in a mentor is character. Someone who genuinely cares about other people that you can trust. Once you've found that person, you're gonna have to provide some sort of value to them. So you could work for them for free or you can pay them or a couple different ideas here. Okay. Back to my story. I found my mentor initially in a common Facebook group. He also owns a mortgage brokerage and I saw him comment on a couple posts and I really liked his takes on how to solve certain problems. And I sensed that he was different from 99% of business owners that were out there. I decided to DM him after I'd been conversing with him for a long time at that point. And luckily for me, he responded with some killer advice and that turned into a relationship from there. And today I have to convince him just to let me pay him for his time. He's seriously just an incredible person and I'm extremely lucky to know him. So find someone one to two steps ahead of you that has high character and provide value to them to build a relationship with them over time. Next up is a method that shouldn't surprise you, but what might surprise you is this stat. 88% of rich people devote 30 minutes or more each day to self-education or self-improvement reading and that most did not read for entertainment. So. Rich people read a lot. Reading personal finance books and self-improvement books are an incredible way to boost your IQ. What I have noticed about myself is that I come in and out of the habit of reading, even though I know how beneficial it is to me. So I recommend setting aside at least 30 minutes a day to read and track your progress on that habit tracking app that I was telling you about earlier in the video. Three books that I highly recommend that you read to boost your financial IQ are Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki Basic Economics by Thomas Sowell, and Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Rich Dad Poor Dad, it really got me thinking differently about how rich people think about money and the typical pitfalls that the middle and the lower class fall into. Basic Economics, it will help you understand how money and the economy work on more of a macro level. And the Psychology of Money, it teaches that it's not how much you know about your money, but more about how you behave with your money, which is actually much harder to teach. These are just three books that I like, but let me know if you have read a self-improvement or a finance-based book that you recommend in the comments. The next thing you can do to boost your financial IQ is checking out different YouTube channels for some solid tips. I'm not gonna lie to you, there wasn't a ton of options out there, which was pretty surprising to me, but you can trust that we will all be putting out great content here on my channel. I do like a couple channels that do have good finance information. 
But as with anything, be careful with clickbait and the doom and gloom that's pretty much everywhere these days. First up is Mark Tilbury. His channel is actually pretty good. He's got a lot of investment advice and starting out with finances and things like that. So I recommend you check out his channel. The next one I'll recommend is Alex Hermosi. I love his channel. He's great with even just motivation, basic finances, and how to make money. His channel is absolutely phenomenal. The next one I recommend is Cody Sanchez. She's great with side hustles and income generation and even business acquisition. She's got a great, unique channel. I definitely recommend that you check her out as well. All right, the next way to boost your financial IQ is a nice method that you can use to stay up to date with the current market. And that is through newsletters and publications. I like newsletters because they save me time from having to go and scan the web for what's going on that day. And they basically compile all the info for me and then throw it in a nice email or an article. The first recommendation that I have is a newsletter called Morning Brew. It's a daily email that you receive in the morning that covers topics like investing, the economy, business, and sometimes they even cover video games. Like yesterday, they covered how Fortnite and Epic Games were sued for misleading millions of players, including children, into making unintended purchases. The next recommendation isn't exactly a newsletter, but it is handy if you wanna boost your financial IQ, and that is the Wall Street Journal. I think it costs a little over 50 bucks a year, so it's not super pricey, but the journal has been around since like the late 1800s, and it's packed with great financial articles and advice. Another way to boost your financial IQ is by taking online classes. These are great because I'm a full believer in investing in yourself, and they're usually at your own pace, which makes it easy to fit into your schedule. I have taken countless online courses, and I'll be real with you, some are great, and some leave me feeling like I got ripped off. Rip off! But the ones that are good make it all worth it, and they can be a real game changer. Now, before I get into a class you should take, shameless plug, we are developing an online class for you guys to take that will walk you through exactly what you need to be doing to build wealth long term. And I'm really excited about it, so stay tuned for that. The class that I'm going to recommend today is Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I don't agree with everything that Dave advises, but I will say this class has helped a ton of people get out of debt and take control of their finances, so credit is due to him there. The class is relatively cheap at 80 bucks, and I think what Dave Ramsey advises is really good for people who are just beginning with their financial journeys or they're deeply in debt. So if that's you, you might take a look at this online class to boost your financial IQ. Okay, last point. Believe it or not, there are a couple movies that are not only entertaining, but actually educational at the same time that I highly recommend that you watch. First up is The Big Short. Not only is this movie really entertaining, it's actually highly informative as well. The Big Short follows the story of an investor that shorted the entire 2008 market crash. What I love about this movie is it explains financial terms like your five. And these are real concepts. The movie goes into depth on how the crash started in the first place, and it's a great watch. Again, I highly recommend. The next movie you should watch is called Margin Call. It's about a young investment banker that discovers the impending crash the night before it happens, and you follow along a company that tries to navigate the financial world collapsing around them. It's not as informative as The Big Short, but it's still a good financial movie to watch that you'll pick up some knowledge from, and it's actually a good movie. So check it out. So that's our 10 ways to boost your financial IQ that I learned on my own financial journey. And if you're interested in taking the next step in your finances, definitely check out the video that I did on how school failed you and this video right over here.